Hi everybody. I want to make this video talking about uh, how to uh, obtain your copy of Eagle CAD and get it installed. Uh, get the Ada Fruit Library installed on your computer and then download the uh, ESR Shield uh, project files for Eagle CAD so you can go ahead and uh, design your own board if you wish. So the first thing we're going to need obviously is we're going to need a copy of Eagle CAD. You can get your copy. It's free. Uh, it's at cadsoftusa.com. This is the home page you're looking at right now. Uh, we go to downloads. We click on download Eagle. And it's going to take us toward the download page. If you see over here the freeware, if you click on it, it gives you the, uh, the scoop on the Eagle CAD Lite Edition. Um, the, the Lite Edition, you just go to, first of all, you just go to the download area and download the Eagle CAD program and when you first start Eagle you'll be asked whether you have a, a personalized license disk or you want to run it Eagle as freeware well we're going to want to run it as freeware and the limitations um, because of the freeware is that uh, the size of the board area is limited to 100 by 800 millimeters uh, which is fine for this project uh, and only two layers can be used and the schematic editor can only create one sheet so but this doesn't impede our project at all uh, we're not going to use it for profit so we'll be within the uh, software uh, uh, license for the freeware version of it so we'll go ahead and go to the download download eagle again uh, download it for your OS whichever one you may be using I'll click there and this is to save the file to download. I've already got mine installed, so obviously I'm not going to uh, download it. Okay, so once you uh, download it, the download's complete, you go ahead and install it, follow the instructions. Um, it's pretty simple, it's non painful. Then the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download the uh, Adafruit library. The easiest way I found probably to get to that is I'll provide a link to it, but if you just type Adafruit, I've already searched for it obviously here, but Adafruit Eagle Cat and this will bring up this top link. You click on it, it'll take you right to the library download page. This gives you just all the details, the license information, uh, all the rhetoric, and you click this link right here to uh, download it. Okay, uh, this just gives you some more information on it, the installation instructions, whatnot, how to install it into a uh, Eagle CAD, you're going to want to read this, follow the instructions, but to download it, we go ahead and just click on the link. And go ahead and just save the file. And once you've saved it, you can extract and follow the installation instructions. Okay, so now we have, uh, you should have your Eagle CAD software set up with the uh, Adafruit library installed. And now all we need to do is go ahead and get the uh, ESR Rev1 zip file. Uh, I provide a link to it down below in the descriptions. But uh, once you go to this page, you should not have to uh, uh, sign in. Uh, I, I set it up to share with anybody that has a link, so no sign in should be required. Um, hit file and then download. And you'll be asked to save the ESR Rev1 zip. I've already got it downloaded, so obviously I'm not going to do it. So once you get it downloaded, you need to go ahead and ins extract those files. Okay. I have mine already extracted. They're in my libraries folder. My CAD library under Eagle CAD in my ESR Rev1. Okay, this could be a list of all of our Eagle CAD files for this project. All we need to do now is the easiest way, unless you want to point your uh, Eagle CAD uh, project files at the folder you have it uh, saved as. The easiest way is just double click on the, S, the ESR Rev1.sch, the schematic file. And it's, Windows is going to complain because it didn't register the extension with Windows. But if we just open with, and we can select the program from the list of our installed programs. And these are the recommended ones, so we'll just go ahead and uh, choose Eagle. And you can always select this to always open this kind of file or not. It doesn't work, but 
then I have mine set up to you to run EagleCat as an administrator because I have network files I need access to. So there we go, and it should go and pop open the EagleCat uh, schematic editor. Uh, the board also opens with it. Here's a copy of the board, the layout of the PCB. Okay, yeah, here's a brief uh, overview of the uh, the circuit. Um, there's uh, two ground uh, references we have built in off of the uh, 5 volt uh, VCC. Uh, we're just splitting that with the 2.100K resistors for a, a 2.5 volt uh, ground reference. Um, the first op amp setup is a, a comparator oscillator, and we can adjust the frequency by adjusting the uh, potentiometer here on R6. Um, the output of the uh, op amp is coupled by that 10 mic cap and then that goes down and feeds the primary of our transformer. The transformer, uh, the secondary, the voltage is dropped down to around 200 millivolts and it's attenuated with the 10 uh, ohm resistor to ground uh, to help absorb any uh, uh, transient spikes uh, from the transformer. Uh, then the, the test lead 2 comes back and we can adjust the attenuation of the probe to the uh, op amp that uh, amplifies the, uh, the the voltage coming through the resistor uh, in order to span the uh, the meter. Uh, we, we do that with the attenuation with uh, a 20 ohm uh, potentiometer here, R5. Uh, the signal is, is, is uh, decoupled with a, uh, a 10 mic cap and is fed into the inverting input of the uh, the second op amp. Uh, it is uh, amplified coupled with that 100 nanofarad uh, capacitor and that's rectified by these two 4148 uh, diodes and then the output is uh, attenuated actually the loads put on the, on the uh, op amp with this uh, uh, 100k potentiometer and this is fed out to our analog input to the Arduino at uh, A5. Uh, the uh, the button that I have set up here is, is uh, run on, on uh, Arduino pin 2 and I have a little 100 nanofarad cap there to help uh, debounce a switch and uh, the switch is just used for the calibration to request on the inside the code or uh, if you wish, you can also use it to encode to display the calibration factors like I did when using a Sane Smart Shield. Uh, just switch me back here. And uh, that's pretty much it. The, it's a, uh, a real basic circuit. Uh, the only thing we're using on the Arduino itself is, is the ground, of course, the 5-volt uh, VCC, and uh, analog pin 5. For the output of the uh, the op amp, then we're measuring the uh, the voltage, and then uh, we're using digital pin two uh, for our uh, button switch. Okay, so that was just a quick uh, overview of the circuit, and uh, we uh, take a look at the board. We just click on this little button on top of the screen, switch to our board view. And this uh, shows us the layout of all of our components from the schematic. The, the two are tied together. Um, the square box here is, is actually the, uh, the Arduino from our Adafruit library with all the, the pin pads. And you can see the traces that are connected to, to the button. Uh, this is our analog 5 going to the uh, uh, wiper of our uh, potentiometer on the output of the op amp. And the other various components. Here's our transformer. So if you, uh, when you get, do get your, uh, you decide to build this, you're going to have to find your transformer or make your own. You can do that with a toroid very easily. Um, you just need to, you may have to uh, alter the layout so that it fits your transformer. Just make sure you have enough room and your traces are uh, uh, lined up correctly. The main thing you have to watch on these uh, shields is the height. Is to make sure that everything is when the uh, LCD display is set on top of your shield that uh, you have plenty of clearance. So anyway, um, these are our basic traces. 
Uh, to get, prepare for the printing and the toner transfer, we just need to go to our view and go to the layers. Uh, we'll just shut them all off. And then we'll select the bottom layer and the pads. This is a one-sided board, so there are no vias. And we'll just hit apply. Okay, we have everything in place now. For this is the bottom view of the board. Is uh, except for the ground plane. I, and I uh, did uh, use a ground plane on this board since uh, the Arduino. Uh, we're actually measuring, you know, at millivolt resolution. I wanted to minimize the noise as much as possible, so I did install a, a ground plane on it. Um, it to, to make the ground plane visible, all we need to do is go ahead and uh, click this button called Rat Nest, and that'll go ahead and, and draw our ground plane in. Okay, so everything's set. Uh, we're ready to print. Uh, we'll go to File, Print, and you're going to need a laser printer. Uh, obviously, this, this is a toner transfer method, so an inkjet obviously isn't going to work. Uh, you need to go into the, the preferences of your printer and uh, set it for the darkest uh, output that your uh, the densest print that your toner uh, print your laser printer will print. Mine's called density adjustment. Years may be called something different. Um, but anyway, you just need to uncheck the printer default and dime it out. And just click OK. And that's important. You want as dense uh, a toner as possible on your transfer. Yeah, let's go ahead and hit print. Now we're back to our uh, printer dialog from the EagleCAD program. You're going to want to select black and solid on this. Uh, you don't want to mirror the, the bottom of the board. You want what we'll do is we'll mirror the top so that when the toner is transferred, the letters are uh, uh, readable and they're not mirrored. So uh, once you have all this done, we're, we're going to go ahead and, and print it in the center of the page as, as a more or less a pattern. You can just go ahead and click uh, OK and it'll print out a, uh, a nice little. Uh, board right in the, in the center of your paper. Okay, uh, your laser printer should kick out uh, a copy of the uh, bottom of the board that we just printed. And uh, what we're going to do with this now is uh, go ahead and measure the, uh, the length and width of the, the printed object and uh, take your PCB and cut it just a bit bigger than the printout. Then uh, once you do that, uh, what we want to do is you want to find a piece of glossy uh, uh, magazine cover, something the heavier side of it, and uh, we want to go ahead and cut it out just a bit bigger than the uh, the page here. Okay, everybody. Uh, once uh, you get the the bottom printed out, and uh, we can uh, go ahead and uh, we can print the image for the uh, the toner transfer for the. Uh, silk screen on top of the board. Uh, we'll just go back to view, we'll go to our layers, and uh, go ahead and uh, shut the bottom off. And so then we're going to go ahead and make the top of the board visible. Uh, we want the pads on, we want the dimensions on, that will draw our outline of the uh, board itself that we're uh, printing. We're going to need the top placement of the parts, uh, the origin, the names of the devices, and I guess it stops. That should be good enough. Go ahead and hit apply. And you can see the, the actual uh, view of the silk screen that we're going to uh, print on, uh, use a toner transfer to print on top of the board. Uh, it looks like uh, this text here got a little out of line. You may have to move this on on your download. Uh, it's simple. All you have to do is go over here to this uh, four arrows that says move and grab it. Then you have this uh, origin plus mark. Just grab it and drag it up out of the way there. Move it over closer to the edge of the board. I'm not sure what happened there, but it's an easy fix. So uh, this is uh, pretty much a uh, Looks good. What we uh, we need to print. It's got the uh, device IDs, the pads, uh, the outline of the device itself. Uh, the Arduino pins are labeled. 
So to print it, we just come up here to our menu, hit our print icon. And again, we've already got a printer set up for the densest uh, toner that y your printer allows. And you go into your advanced uh, printer options and hit that density adjustment. Make sure it's maxed out. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and on this one, we'll leave the uh, black and we'll leave the solid, but we want to hit mirror. And what this is going to do is going to print it upside down. So when you go through and do your toner transfer, the text is going to be right side up so you can actually read it on top of your board. And you go ahead and hit OK and you should be able to print it out a nice little uh, <coughs> silk screen for your uh, uh, your board there. And again, uh, the toner transfer method you use, um, I'm not going to go into that. There's a lot of uh, toner transfer uh, PCB videos on the net. Um, if you have any issues, um, you know, make sure you send me a message, leave me a comment, you know, and, and I will go step by step on a toner transfer method if, if, if you request it. Uh, but there's a lot of good videos out there already, and I really don't see doing another one unless uh, you guys are having trouble. Uh, one tip that I will give you is uh, if you're in doubt on those traces, on those toner transfers, go over them with a black Sharpie. Um, you know, if it looks just a little bit grainy, just take the time and pencil the trace out before you put in your etchant, because that will save you a lot of misery. And that was one of the biggest problems I didn't do was uh, when I did my boards was uh, take the time and actually just get you a fine tip Sharpie for those 30 mil traces and just um, color them in. Uh, if, if, they, if there's any doubt whatsoever, it will it'll really improve your board. So, um, after... I'm going to end the video here. If you guys have any questions at all about the toner transfer method uh, using that uh, glossy paper, uh, feel free to ask, and I'll uh, I'll go ahead and set up and I'll etch a board for you guys. All right. Well, thanks for watching.